Hello, hello! I wanted to talk about a quick and simple technique that you can use to drop inline dingbat icons in the middle of your text. With this technique, you'll be able to just type in special codes into the middle of your fields in your spreadsheet and have InDesign automatically replace those codes with your unique icons. Let's get started. Now, building off the previous episodes that taught you how to use data merge, we can look back at our spreadsheet and see, in this case, that I've used a bunch of weird little strings of characters. These are XX Research and XX Money, XX Components. All of these are special codes that I'm using to represent icons that will be inserted into the text at a later point. It's useful to share this list of codes with your client or just keep a record of it for yourself so that you know exactly the codes that you'll be needing to use as you write up the individual cards or tiles for your game. As for the icons themselves, make sure that the files are vector, SVG, and always flattened into a single vector object. No groups, no strokes, just simple shapes. You'll import them into this website called icomoon.io. The site also has its own library of ready-made icons for you to use in your own custom dingbat font. Once you've selected the icons you want to use, then you'll go to generate font down at the bottom of the screen. The next page shows you a full list of the icons that you've chosen to be part of your dingbat font. And it's important to know the difference between each of these fields. This name that you see here is not actually going to be relevant for our purposes. What's really important is the ligature down below. That's that little FI character you see there. That is where we'll put in all the codes that we previously set up in that big list that we have for our reference. In this case, this radioactive symbol is going to be called XX Reactor. And the rest of the icons are going to have their own unique ligatures as well. After you've downloaded and installed your new Dingbat font from Icomoon, it's time to make some paragraph styles and character styles that are going to be integrated into the body copy using what's called grep. Grep is a very powerful tool that you can use to automatically apply character styles to specific sequences of characters within your paragraphs. Those specific strings of characters are going to be replaced with the character style that I have designated here, in this case, Chimera Station Dingbat. Taking a look at that character style, we can see that I've really just replaced the font with the new Icomoon font that I downloaded and installed. There's also a second character style here called Point that is based on the Dingbat character style, with the only difference being that I've applied a new color to the characters. You can also make other character styles in this way that are based on your original character style with slight changes to the font size or the color. And then I make sure that I have a second individual a standalone grep instruction in my paragraph style that searches for the string xx points and applies the new character style that I just set up. Now we're ready to actually see the magic happen. Uh, I've selected this block of text that has our special codes, our ligatures set up here. Uh, there's no formatting, it's all default. Now I want to apply the paragraph style that, that I've got set up here. That's uh, this one right here. Cool, hey, look at that. So now all of those ligatures have been replaced with the character styles, which in turn apply the special font that we downloaded from Icomoon. All of this nested style and grep stuff can be a little bit confusing and it takes some practice to get some troubleshooting down. But one of the benefits of this method is that it's pretty easy to find some bugs. For example, if you're missing a letter in one of your strings or there's a typo, then it's pretty easy to spot because it just won't turn into an icon. It'll stay a normal string of text. In this case, I was missing an X and so it didn't turn into a component icon. And also grep instructions are case sensitive. So here I tried to insert the points icon into this line of text, but I forgot to capitalize P. Once I fix that, then it'll automatically turn back into a points icon like it's supposed to. Using this technique, now we can go back to our spreadsheet and just start typing in all of the different codes that we've already established in just plain text. We can share this with our client and they can manually type up all of the cards or tiles that they want to use. We can do the same for ourselves and we don't have to use any weird embedded placeholder images or anything like that. It's all just automatically inserted when you go through InDesign. It's a fantastic technique. It's one I use almost every single day and I find it extremely useful. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe 
and support the rest of this series on Patreon.